I didn't really have much expectations. The only expectations I had was to, you know, to try my best, um, not be scared. I think that was that was the number one thing. Like, don't be scared of whatever league I'm playing in or who I'm playing against. Just go out there and try to do what I can do. Um, for me, it's been it, it was tough starting. Um, and it's getting tough now because I've had a little bit of success and now teams are kind of, you know, focusing on me now. So it, it's a lot tougher. Um, so I've been, you know, kind of having ups, ups and downs. Um, so for me, it's just kind of adjusting and uh, trying to find new ways to, to be better. Um, but uh, in terms of, yeah, expectations, I just expect to, to try to be my best. I know what kind of player I am. I know I can score the ball, I can shoot the ball. Um, but it's about you know expanding my game. So hopefully at the end of the season, I can truly say I, I was I'm a better player now than than I was at the beginning of the season or the middle of the season. Yeah, for sure. I think we're a playoff team. Um, when we play well and when we play together, we're a playoff team for sure. Um, it's just can we do that every night? Can we do that for 40 minutes? That's the. Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> I like every. You can say more than one. I like everybody, but I think um, I think Mike, me and Mike probably laugh the most together. Um, Mike's a goof. It's easy. He's a yeah. He's yeah. He's a he's a goofball. So um, he's he's hilarious. Um, but phew, I can name a bunch of guys, man. Uh, Chris is a great dude. I, I love Albert. Me and Albert laugh like crazy. Um, he he doesn't make too many jokes, but when he does, he he's a funny dude. Um, and, he, and his English is not the best, so like it makes it even funnier. Um, but uh, damn, who else? Pepe is a great guy. Me and Pepe room together um, on the road, so you know me and Pepe spend a lot of time together. Um, but yeah, everybody. I just have interactions with everybody. I mean, we're with each other every day for you know four hours at least so um so i know every we've, we've gotten to know everybody really well i mean it's good it's pretty pretty regular i guess um toronto's a, a great city especially um for for people of mixed descent like me um you know my dad was an immigrant came to toronto when he was 13 or 14 um from jamaica so um toronto is like a, a big we call it like a melting pot like there's a, a bunch of different uh um races and and uh mixes especially my generation too um so it, it's it's really welcoming to anybody and everybody because we we're used to all different types of races so i think it's a it's a really good city to live in the cold sucks <laughs> it's really cold up there but um but other than that, you know, Toronto has everything, everything you can want for sure. So it's a beautiful city. I, I love the city to death. To death. Um, and you know, I always love going back there every summer. In my community, um, like the kids played, uh, like in in Canada especially, it's either and Toronto, it's either hockey or basketball. Um, and because uh, Canada is a huge hockey country, of course, we're one of the best hockey teams in the world nationally. Um, but uh, hockey's an expensive sport to play, so you have to have a lot of money. You have to like the leagues cost a lot of money. You have all the equipment. Yeah. Um, and for me and my my community, it was just you know you you have a ball, you have a hoop. We had a park, um, and that's what we would do you know all night. Um, so I just kind of fell in love with it because my friends played it. All my friends played it. Um, and then I I realized like you know it was it was just something I, I love to do. It made me happy. So. Um, I, once I once I realized that I could be pretty good at it, that's when I started taking it seriously. I started in the summer actually, in the summertime, because uh -huh. um, I think I think one of my teammates last year, not in not in Italy, but I was playing um, on a team in Canada for the summer. Yeah, I know. Um, and one of my teammates had it, and I liked it. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And he he retired. He retired the summer after. So, so I I messaged him. I said, Yo, I'm gonna steal your headband. Uh, Stay your headband swag. So he's like, okay. So I tried it out and I liked it. But yeah, it's 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 something different. I I usually like wear the sleeve, which I'm gonna start wearing the sleeve too. But um, but yeah, I, I like to uh, to try different things and and look a little bit different from everybody else. So yeah. I don't have that many. People think I have a lot, but 
I think I have like 10, but I have, this was separate. These are, this is my family, my family's initials, uh -huh. my mom, my brother. Um, this is my mom's name. Um, this was one piece. Um, I have this, I think this was, this was my first tattoo. This is where I'm from. Okay. Yeah, the code, yeah. Um, this I think was my second tattoo. How old was I when I got these? Maybe like, I was young, I was like 17, 18, I think. Um, and I have, I have this, I got this last year in Italy, in Rome. Um, Why the three? That's my number, yeah, that's, huh. that's my number. Cartel took it from me this year, yeah. but uh, yeah, this I usually always wear three, and I got this this summer. But yeah, that's it, that's all I got. You know, it's, it's been a crazy year, um, especially for, uh, for these type of movements and, and protests. Um, it's big, really big in Canada as well. Um, and I mean, it, it's really, in my opinion, a lot of people look at it like a U.S. problem, but for me, it's like a worldwide problem. It's it's everywhere, um, but it's it's really prevalent in in the United States and and Canada as well. Just uh, with the you know kind of the systemic racism and and just how you know the minorities have been you know oppressed and and kind of held down, um, not given a real fair chance um, from the beginning. Um, from hundreds of years ago, so it's it's really really hard for us to catch up now. Um, me coming from government housing and and uh, really really you know humble beginnings. Um, I've seen it. I've seen how it's so hard for for a lot of black men, young black men, to to get out of the kind of the system that they're in the 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 cycle, better word, um, that they're in. Um, especially in the states, I spent six years living in the states so I, I've seen it in the states as well and it's it's so tough a lot of people you know don't understand it um, and it's really hard to understand unt until you're living among them um, and uh, in the in the like I said the the housing um, that we come from and it's it's tough it's very tough um, and you don't have a lot of role models that's I think one of the, the biggest problems. We have a lot of people who we don't want to be like, but we don't know anybody personally who we do want to be like. Um, so it's really hard to follow people. Um, so we follow our friends who aren't doing anything, or we follow the people who, you know, the only way we know how to get out of the government housing and, and the ghettos is, you know, is crime a lot of the times. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle that, that just, you know, keeps, turning and turning and, and, and repeating itself. Um, and I think it's a lot of it is because the, the lack of role models and the lack of attention um, in the black community, especially. Um, and yeah, it, it's, 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 it's something I could talk about for hours, so I'm not gonna get into it crazy, but, but yeah, it's, it's a real problem. Um, I think that this year was a good eye opener for not only United States and Canada, but you know, the world. Um, so hopefully we raised some noise and, and uh, we, made, uh, we made some things happen.